distance back, at least. Uh, we're causing a bit of a traffic jam now. So, that's the police on the way. And uh, it's been an interesting day, viewers. Hello, viewers. It's the day after the arrest. And I've had, a, I've had a constant flood of visitors. I've had visitors coming to my flat all day to shake my hands. They want autographs off me. They've been bringing me beer. I've got about six cases of beer in the flat there. I'll be drunk for a month. And the latest two to drop in are the, are the Bulgos. Yeah, the Bulgos are here. Look, kids, hang on. We have Kako. He, Kako is a professional onion picker from Bulgaria. <laughs> no chance, mate. A Annie, Annie used to work on the Bulgarian <laughs> nuclear project. <laughs> how's it going, Annie? Are you, are you happy? Yeah. Good, good. You, you still married to this fella? <laughs> yes, definitely, mate. You still married? Yes, yes. I'm gonna answer because of that, yes. D does he pay, does he pay you lots of money? Does he give you <laughs> does, he, does he does he give you all his money? Yeah. You you better give no, it the me. other the other way around, mate. Now the woman's pay to the men. No, 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 Keko. <laughs> no. A... We we can always go online. And it's a different. We, we can always go online and order Annie another Bulgarian husband. No. <laughs> <laughs> no chance. Dif different system now. Always Bulgarian. <laughs> always, always women pay to the men's now. Not at all. Never. <laughs> Never well, about, ever. You didn't say anything about your new t-shirt either. That's because I'm buzzing my tits off, viewers. I've got, <laughs> I've got the best t-shirt I've ever had in my life, and I've had some good t-shirts. Watch this. What Keko and lovely Annie bought me for my birthday. Can you do the intro music? <laughs> Stephen Gray, rock and roll king and metal detecting. There's fucking two of us now, kids. Two of us. Is that actually free? This is the Bulgarian Anglo Celtic, and Keko and Annie gave me this amazing t shirt that I absolutely love for my birthday and a bottle of beer and some Bulgarian sausages and a subscription to a Bulgarian dating site I'm, I'm, I'm dating Bulgarian women as from today kids Th thank you Keko Th thank you Annie welcome mate <laughs> all right puffs you, you Bulgarian puffs all right puffs <laughs> <laughs> All right, viewers, I better sit Buster on my lap, otherwise he might run off round the block while I get engrossed in telling you this tale. So, this is a video to give you my feedback and thoughts about all what went on when I got arrested for cut cutting the padlock off at the mill. Uh, basically, it was a marvellous, marvellous, glorious caper that was funny as it did have its serious points. I did try and help the local community move forward on this difficult hot potato. Uh, I'm not going ever back up to the mill. I've promised the police that so that if I went up there and I got into trouble again, the charges would start racking up and get more serious and they'd stick or they'd have more chance of sticking each time I went back up. So I want to travel, enjoy myself, and make videos for you, so I ain't going back up to that mill. I'll go to Flabbery Mill instead and detect. Well, it was hilarious what went on. Um, they turned up, as I've described on my Facebook, they blew into the car park like discarded cigarette packets on the wind scuttled in on the wind and the car park was surround was full of police vehicles and police uniforms and body cameras and whatnot and um, it was amazing I thought game on game on actors you've all fell 
you've all, you've all, you're all doing your scripts that I wrote. I wrote this script. I, I've got live actors, and they've turned up, and they've come to do the arrest scene. It's fucking amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, they took me down to Worcester cells. It took us an hour and fifteen minutes while I was in in the back of the sweat box in rush hour traffic. And that settled me in. I started feeling anxious for about 30 seconds. I said, hang on, Stephen. This is your moment of greatness. Fucking enjoy it. So I settled in and I just started growing. And here's, bi here's Big Pat. Have, have, have a good day, mate. Stop it. Stop it. It's gone now. He's gone, Buster. He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Anyway, so it took an hour and 15 minutes, and by the time I got out the van, got a little bit of fresh air. I was absolutely pumped. I was pumped. And we, uh, we went in, done the formalities at the desk and that. Lovely desk sergeants. I must state that although I might um, describe certain police procedures in this video, it might come across at the odd time that I've got something against the police. I haven't. I actually, I've got friends that are policemen. I've got friends that are fucking gangsters. I, I, I'm friendly with all people. I don't care if you're a good person, be you a international cocaine dealer or a chief constable. As long as you're good, I'm a fan of yours. Um, so yeah, they put me in the cell for like six hours. And I was in like a zen state of mind. I Initially I had a headache and every time um, I heard footsteps I was hoping that it was someone coming to my cell to let me out. But then I gave myself an Indian head massage and the... The headache just went away. And I come out of it the other side into this zen like state in the cell for the next five and a half hours. Uh, I can only describe it like I was a battery that was on charge. I was sitting there looking at the grim decor, the light that looked like the underneath of some alien's translucent lucent belly or something. It's just the ugliest big old light I've ever seen there was some ambient background noise running through the pipes or something that sounded like a constant truck reversing <laughs> had to listen to that for five and a half hours but I zoned out of it they put me in a cell but I took myself out of that cell and I was in the perfect place, just reflecting and growing stronger in mind by the minute. And five and a half hours in, after they let me out for the interview, I knew I had them actors exactly where I needed them, and I was in the best frame of mind possible. Yeah, so I was completely charged by the time they took me into be interviewed talking about charges the charges were criminal damage harassment and going equipped so if I'd have got like really pummeled for them it could have turned out a bit crappy but uh, we sit down for the interview I've got my duty solicitor in front of me on a mobile phone video call. I've got two constables here, slightly older one, lovely chap. Shout out to Officer Brown. His younger guy there, shout out to little Adam. Lovely chap, Adam. Not even very little. Don't know where I get these things no. from. Uh, so yeah, and then we begin, and he did his pre preamble, Officer Brown, and uh, 
he he no. looked me in the eye and uh, no. he said very earnestly he said Stephen I must tell you that me no. and my colleague here we cannot tell lies we only tell the truth and straight away I shot back with Officer Brown for the purposes of the tape I must inform you that I was addicted to crack, heroin and methadone for 24 years and I lied every day and I hated it. So therefore, nowadays, I simply cannot lie, I can only tell the truth, just like you two fine officers. So that set, set up the mood for it. Um, he asked me, he got totally mixed up on my spoof video. Buster betted me £50 that I wouldn't go and cut the lock off. Now, poor old Brownie, my mate PC Brownie, he uh, he got all that completely mixed up. And on the taped interview, he said to me very seriously, who was the person who bet you £50 you couldn't cut the lock off? And my reply was, that would be Buster, my 15-year-old Spanish mongrel officer. Remember, this is all on the tape. Um, I went on to cover such lurid subjects as illegal countryside erections being needed to make flaccid. All for the comedy value, all delivered deadpan, as if I was a very serious... Um, it's just amazing. Uh, Adam chipped in at one point, tag teamed me a little bit, but there was no bad cop. They were both good cops. Adam tag teamed me and he said, well, you went up to this contentious area where a lot of inflammatory incidents have took place. You didn't even take your dog. You took bolt croppers. I suggest that you went up there to cause trouble and harass this lady and cause damage. And I just said, uh, I, I was like me pressing the pause button on my own police interview. And from then on in, it was me interviewing the police on the interview. I just said, hang on a minute, Adam, mate, PC, Adam, blah de blah. Um, can you tell me why that area is so contentious and what sort of incidents have been taking place up there? And he read his script perfectly. He reeled out about six or seven contentious incidents that had happened up at the mill. And uh, I counted with about another three that he'd forgot about. And it turns out none of these incidents were caused by me or the local public. It was all things that had been erected by the people living at the mill or incidents, alleged incidents by members of the public of them being followed and harassed, the public being harassed. So, the policeman, on my police interview, when I was interviewing him, reeled out a litany of things that the public hadn't actually committed and allegedly somebody at the mill may have committed so it went like that kids and um, three quarters of the way through the video the um, duty solicitor lovely lady she was visibly laughing on the end of the phone because I, it was like i was a director and i had this unconscious script written and everybody just played the parts to a t they all said exactly the right things at the right moment to help my case it was full the interview was full of either deadpan humour at my best or massive domineering intellect just directing what I needed these people to say. And uh, the upshot was that I got a caution for criminal damage, even though that's a bit contestuous. Um, and I had to pay £20 for the lock. So I'd call that a result, seeing as it was up for criminal damage, harassment and going equipped. I got a lift home and they even gave me my bolt croppers back. Bless you, Brownie. Bless you, Adam, mate. Top.
policeman geezers, gave me my bolt croppers back. I'm a local hero. Everybody wants to buy me a pint. I'm going to get about 6,000 metal detecting permissions. I, there won't be a field for 20 miles around that I won't be able to enter and swing my device on. Beer, free pass to metal detect. 20 miles around that was my game plan and to get a viral video or two out of it and they're certainly going viral i booted up um, my first little video as soon as i got out of custody just a little snapshot of the arrest and that booted all that up to youtube that's on um, that's climbing towards 4,000 views now a day and a half later i've I've got videos with much more views on, but they've took a long time to get there. That's the fastest climbing video, my arrest video, that I've ever made. That was part of the plan. I had no malice, I had no intent to harass the lady. I had no intention to cause trouble. All I wanted to do was prosecute my right of way and open up a right of way that the local lovely people of Hampton were too scared to use, some of them and some of them still are. So that was my game plan and that's exactly what happened. Because of what happened this morning, I have to arrest you <coughs> on suspicion of criminal damage, going equipped, and harassment. Okay. Freedom! 